worship you this morning, mighty God. We adore you, mighty God. Go ahead and God. Yeah. 
I have for 49 years tried and tried and tried. But he has me with him, and I cannot do anything about it. God doesn't have me with him. I dare say, sis, there's not one of us in this room that there's someone we love, someone we respect. You want them to come to Christ. Come on, are you with me? Amen. Hey, you need to keep fight that battle, keep going to the Savior, because when we engage in the flesh, we never win. We never win. Keep on praying that. Keep on praying that. I'm out, I'm out of the situation. I'm in a wonderful place. I've seen your house before it stopped. People are so friendly. I wish I'd been there 10 years ago. <laughs> When God moves you, that's another message. I say the same thing. Amen. Can we do that? Brothers, sisters, gather around and pray. Dan, we need your power too, buddy. Dear Lord, here we are before you by the authority that we have in us because your spirit lives in us. Because your spirit lives in us. Not because of us. But because your spirit lives in us. We release that power to bind those demons in her son's life. Yes. And cast them from this family as far as they can be. Yes. Lord, we know that you're in this place. Yes. We know that you're all powerful. You are the creator. You yes. know how to fix these things. Yes. Lord, and we're not going to stand in your way. We're going to pray your will be done. Yes. Yes. We're not going to stand, we're not going to stand here and limit your power. I pray things that may not be your will. But your will be done in this family's life, Lord. Lord, we lift her up. We lift him up. And Lord, open his eyes. Remove the scales that Satan has put on his eyes so that he may see you, see the light through his mother again. And be turned toward you and give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray.
years I've had many altar times, and it never ceases to amaze me how God answers that call. Maybe the altar we think of here, maybe the altar's right back there. Maybe it's over here. Hey, give God praise. Isn't he awesome? Yeah. Yeah. I want to change it up a little bit today. Uh, oops, over there. Try to stash it somewhere. Uh, to a more of a teaching mode. A little bit of preaching, teaching. I say teaching, I probably won't be sitting down too long. This is the way I do. But it's kind of, we want to look back even at the book of James. You may turn to the book of James in our study today. Praise God. The book of James. You know, sometimes, <clears throat> I mean, I just feel like shouting God's praise. Sometimes we need to sit down and just dig out some meat. Come on, sometimes we just need to dig out some meat. Let's see him, how he speaks to us, even in the book of James. I'm going to try sitting down for a while. I'm not sure how long I'll stay here, but, but we're going to be teaching from the book of James. So you might turn in the first chapter, starting verse number one. Verse number one. It says, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes of which are scattered abroad. Greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, we need some of that. Amen? We need some wisdom. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we need a touch from you today in so many ways. And Lord, we just celebrate you and I wouldn't be want to be anywhere else but in your presence. And God, you've done more even in this service today than our words could ever obtain. But God, right now, your word is anointed and Lord, we just trust you to do your work. Yeah. Have your way, God. Lord, teach us, God. Let us just slow down and listen as to what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Amen. You ready to receive from God today, church? Amen. Amen. Well, James is a book written to a church that had a few issues, if you will. A few, time, a few things going on. And we just want to begin this series called Let's Talk. And if you want a copy of my notes, I've given some of them out, actually. You can take notes, and if you have questions that come along, I feel I want to invite you to, to get in touch with me. This is somewhat like a class, but it's not interactive, but we'll be here all afternoon. So write things down. I'd love to talk with you. But we're going to go through this series of book, uh, book of James and talk with the letter that James wrote to the church. Well, we see this. In this letter, actually, what he's challenging people is, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up in the faith. It's time to get deeper. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God. So we're going to delve into the Word of God, let the Spirit of God speak to our hearts. Yes. It's time to grow up, saints. And this is going to be a challenge to you. Yeah. Some may even get mad at me, saying, oh, you're gearing this to me. Well, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Yeah. I'm starting from verse 1. Let's go. Because he's speaking to me, too. We're in this together, right? right. It's time for all of us to grow up. Amen. The question, whenever you look at a book, you need to look who he is and who is he writing to, yeah. to really understand the context of the book. So who was James? This thing's working. Praise God. Thanks, Tom. That's awesome. Who was James? He was the brother of Jesus. Right. Can you imagine what that was like? Being raised with Jesus? I mean, a sinless brother? See, Jesus had brothers and sisters, mind you. Right. Five brothers and sisters as well. 
And can you imagine, I'm sure Jesus was ornery. I don't want to sound disrespectful. That's not wrong or sinful. He's probably ornery. He liked to laugh, have fun. But, you know, he may even get angry. But he never sinned. Right. So he never crossed that threshold. And I'm sure there was conflict, but he never let it be combatant. And probably his brothers and sisters didn't like that. Here, I, I, have, uh, I have three other siblings. And uh, we never fought. Right, right, right. <laughs> I was the third son, uh, and then our, our, my sister's younger than me. And so I was the brunt of many things. It's funny, my older brother, oldest brother, he's six years older than me, so if you see him, make sure and tell him that. Um, but he, uh, you know, he, I was this little squirt. He wanted nothing to do with me. And then as we became, both became men, all that stuff went aside, because we grew up. We grew up. So he's the brother of Jesus, is who's writing this book. So we need to understand that. Now, with that being said, whoops. Who did he write to? Who did he write to? He wrote to Christian Jews that were scattered abroad. They were scattered because of persecution. So he's writing to this, this letter to people that got a lot of problems. And they're being persecuted. And we talk even about racism today and the atrocity of it. It's, it's ugly. It's terrible. But it's been going on for centuries. And until Jesus comes back, I hate to tell you this, it's going to continue going on. Rebuke it. It's sin. But here, the Jews were scattered amongst Gentiles who hated them. So they were Christian Jews. So they were hated by the Jews, and they were hated by the Gentiles. Right. So they felt very lonely. You been there? Yeah. And that's where they were. James writing to that them people. Uh, Christian Jews rejected by their countrymen, rejected by the Gentiles. Now, why else did he write the letter? They were having some problems in their personal lives. Right. Come on, is this getting real? Okay. Man. Problems in your personal lives. Uh, also, they were having problems in their church fellowship. Right. That's not something new. Right. That's not something new. They were having problems in their church fellowship. They were having difficulty uh, being tested. Can you imagine being separated from your countrymen alone and feeling they were being tested? They were facing temptations to sin. They were catering to the rich in the church. The rich people were elevated. The poor people were put way back to the back. We're going to talk about that in this book. Also, the church members were competing for offices. They were competing. Just, it just really sickens you, doesn't it? Much, much about one of the things. Church, what's wrong with you? Church, what's wrong with us? Okay? Competing for offices. Uh, they were also at failure in the part of many to live what they professed. Yeah. They were saying one thing, but their lives didn't show it. <laughs> also, their tongue was a serious problem. Yeah. Their tongue, you, we'll get to that in James 3. Their tongue was a serious problem, and he is... Is, is writing to correct that. Also, the church members, well, I'm sorry, the worldliness resulting in sickness. Yeah. Church, I want to tell you something. When we allow worldliness to come into the church, we can become very sick. Yeah. We can become sick physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The sooner you get the evil out, the sooner you can be healed. Come on, right. God glory. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm convinced that we as elders and pastors will pray for people for healing. But God's saying, not yet. Because right. yeah. they haven't learned their lesson. Come on, have you been there? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you've been there. And maybe you're going through a, a hurt in your life now. Maybe there's a unique healing. And maybe it, it's just life as it is. But maybe it's because you've been brought something into your life that you need to get rid of, and healing is just on the other side of that thing. Right. Hey, we're going to talk about that too. This is just the introduction, okay? Um, <laughs> also, there was spiritual immaturity in the church. Yep. Spiritual immaturity. Spiritual maturity is one of the greatest needs in the church today. But would you be so bold to say amen? amen. Spiritual maturity. Uh, too many churches are playpens for babies. Ooh, this is going, no this is going to hurt. Okay, this is going to hurt. We're the church. Playpens for babies instead of workshops for adults. Amen. Hey, come on. I was reading this because this is in the commentary. I, I wrote it down. I thought, man, this is, this is just right where... 
the church is. The members are not mature enough to eat solid spiritual food. They have to be fed milk. That's in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. I encourage you to read that scripture. Paul is uh, basically saying, grow up, church. Amen. Grow up. I wish I could tell you more, he says in that reference, but you can't handle it because you're, you're always on milk. It's time for us all to grow up. Amen. It's time for us all to grow up. So there's also five marks of mature Christians. Five different marks in this book of maturity. One is to be patient in testing. To be patient in testing. Also, to practice the truth. Man. Hey, church, the world doesn't need someone talking one thing and doing another. Hey, we need to be practicing the truth. Yes. Everything that we've been built up today, encouraged in the Lord, take it out there and practice it. If we do, the church will grow. Right. But we've got to grow up. Yes. Also, to have a mature believer has power over his own tongue. Amen. I've been striving for a length of time to pray for wisdom. And I find in that prayer, I try to pray it every day. I find I talk less. Come on, are you with me? There's a lot of things I say that doesn't need to be said. Right. And the Spirit of God will bring checks in your lives and that those things you wanted to say, you don't. Right. We need to pray for wisdom, church. Yes. Also, a mature believer is not, a, is, is rather, is a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. Right. Is seeking for peace. Right. So church, if we want to move forward in the Lord, we need to be seeking peace, tranquility, unity of mind, not a troublemaker. Right. And also, he is prayerful in troubles. Yes. Church, we, the church, but we need to pray. Yes. Praying for, for peace, praying for unity, praying for God's presence, praying for, to, like we sang earlier, get rid of ourselves that he may be exalted. Can I get an amen on that one? Have I made anyone upset yet? So that's pointing to me too. Okay? Hey, I'm, I'm sitting down because if I stood, I, I feel like I should be humbled. I need to be seated too. Yes. Spiritual maturity cannot be achieved unless a person is born again. Amen. Cannot. Amen. Cannot be achieved. So the question is, how can a person be born again? How can a person be born again? Well, I'll tell you. The Spirit of God, let's move out of the way, takes the Word of God and generates new life within the heart of the sinner. The Spirit of the God, Spirit of God takes the Word of God and brings new life. Yes. You see, we are all made up of three parts. Your body, that we all see, your soul, which is your intellect and your emotions, and also our mind or our spirit, body, soul, spirit. So our soul is our intellect. So we are all three. When you are born again, see, the reality is that your spirit died because of sinful nature. And you can't understand the things of God. You are a body and a soul, but your spirit has not been brought to life until you're born again. When you're born again, the spirit of God resides in you. I want to teach a little bit here. Those the people, the loved ones that you're praying for, and you say are born again, but they're not living right. I want to tell you, if they are born again, you can speak to the spirit that resides within them. Amen. Amen. See, when we start uh, battling with them in the flesh and their rebellion, we're going to lose. But if, if they are born again, you could speak to the spirit within them. Let him do the work that we can't do. Amen. Can I get amen on that? Amen. If they are born again. If we are born again, we'll repent. If we are born again, we will forgive. If we are born again, we won't say those things we ought, we want to say sometimes. Right. We're born again. Hey, guess what? We're not alone. Paul in Romans chapter 7 said, I wish I'd not said that. Wish I'd not done that. I've been there many times. Yes. Are you, can you be so bold? Raise your hand that we're in this. Okay. But some of you guys are not telling the truth. Okay, let's go. <laughs> That's all right. God knows. All right. Also, faith comes from the Word of God. 
So we're saved by faith through grace and the Word of God. The more Word you can get in you, the more your faith will grow. Right. Hey, the more Word you can get in you, we're going to dig into the Word. And if you'll follow along this series, then your faith will grow. Your faith will grow. Yes. So we need to do a self-examination. Yes. Hey, we need to quit pointing fingers at anyone else right. but me, right. not you. Man. Quit pointing fingers at anyone else. The Spirit of God needs to deal with you and me. Right. Okay? Don't think about your spouse. Don't think about your neighbor. Think about what, where you are in your walk with God. Let's self-examine. And even in, in communion, actually, I want to have communion service on, uh, in two weeks, on Passover day. I want to have communion. And I pray, I pray that we're growing together, that we come together in unity, and God just moves in an amazing way. But if they were divided, Satan wins. That's just a reality. Right. So faith, the word of God increases our faith. We need to examine ourselves in 1 Corinthians 11, 31 through 32. You can read that reference. It says, examine yourselves in light of God's word. For if we judge ourselves, not if we judge everyone else. <laughs> Let that sink in. If we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Yes. But we, when we are judged, we are chastened. We talked about that last week a little bit. We are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Right. Hey, this, this teaching we're going into in James is about a self-examination. Judge yourself that you be not judged. Yes. Obedience. Obey what God teaches us. This yes. is all the introduction, by the way. Obey what God teaches us. Do it. Right. Do it. No matter what the cost. But I, I like my trips here. I like my trips there. I like whatever. I'm, I'm not, hey, enjoy life, but never let it get in the way of God. Amen. And if something is hindering you and your self-examination, a wise person who's praying every day for wisdom says, get that out of my life. Can I get that amen on yeah. that? So it's time for us to grow up. It starts with you and me. Yeah. Right. We need to get that out of our life. Yes. There's some things right here that I just feel like I pause in my spirit. I feel like just saying, guys, we could just start naming that things. I could stand up here. I feel like jumping and running and getting on this altar and start declaring some things. And if I started doing that, some things are going to strike home on you. And you're going you're gonna to feel like, oh, my word, pastor nailed it with what's going on in my life. Guess what? You're not alone. Right. But for you to move forward, you've got to get rid of some stuff. Yeah. I think scripture says deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Matthew 18. You can read that there. Yes. So we must obey. We must be doers of the word. James is going to deal with that. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. I'm going to tell you something that Lisa and I very deep, deeply respect in the Christian walk. We've been in church a long time, and Christian can, Christians can learn this language I call Christianese. And they can talk awful spiritual. And quite honestly, I don't know why. And, and maybe you do that sometimes. And, and pray. And just, God forgive me if I step in your toes. But some people think they have to pray in King James. It's more holy. <laughs> hey, if you do, that's, the, that's your prayer. Then that's where you are. But you know, King James, quite honestly, isn't God's language. Right. 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 Well, hey, let's say, let that soak in. I tell you, at the end of the series, hey, you might not like me, but you got to love me. Because <laughs> we're in this together. I'm, hey, we're in it together. Amen. Guess what? We've learned in Scripture trials will come. Amen. Trials is part of our growing up. It's normal. It's part of it. Trials will come. Whenever we are serious about spiritual growth, we are to be prepared for some extra trials and testing. Yes. Hey, we're getting serious. And I'm going to make a prophetic statement. In this study, if you will follow along, let God grow you, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Right, man. Yeah. It's going to get worse. Well, man, I'll just refrain. I'm going to get in the back row. And I'm going to, hey, by the way, we got rid of all the back row last week. You oh, notice that? We just moved the benches forward because we needed space for baptistry. And it's all Missy's fault. Blame her. There we go. <laughs> and by the way, I think space helped too. So you can blame both of them. Oh, yeah, I was here, too. So, okay, we're all free. Hey, we just changed a few things. But you know what? If that upsets you, you need to pray. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. I need to pray. We didn't do it just to upset. Hey, never mind. Okay, I'm not even going there. I'm not even going to say anything. 
So Satan will turn up the heat more than you press in. Right. Don't quit. Don't quit. When that time arrives, you will be on the verge of a new and wonderful blessing. Amen. If you stay the course, you get on the other side of it. There is victory just on the other side. Yes. But Satan will heat things up first. Hey, we're in the fire because we even came from first day. I, I'm a challenge pastor. That's what I do. I'm not so good at some other things. But I can promise, I've told the Lord, I will challenge you. I will challenge me. And I also will be so humble to say, I'm in this with you. Yes. I'm not better than anybody. Which, by the way, the letters that James wrote, we back up, so you start to read that, so hold on. If you read 1 Corinthians, have you noticed that, you know, the gifts were flowing and in the Corinthian church, but you know what? I was reading uh, even that book and reading before, and Corinthians, I didn't know if you knew this, but they had a few issues. Oh, yes. They, they had a few. My partner has gone outside of the turn here. In 1 Corinthians, you read about this. They had, here's some of the issues. Christians believe, Corinthian believers failed to address their critical issues, which included divisions, immorality, lawsuits among the believers. What? Confusion about marriage. What? We can keep saying that. <laughs> well, what's going on in the church today? Uh, eating food sacrificed to pagan idols, abuses of the Lord's Supper, improper de decorum and worship services, abuses of spiritual gifts, confusion about the resurrection, and lack of discipline and finances. Wow. They had some issues. But you know what? They had some issues, and the gifts were flowing. Because God doesn't give up on you. Right. God doesn't give up on his church. Yeah. The Spirit of God used Paul to bring a letter to correct the issues. And James is the same thing. They had some issues that needed correcting. Hey, guess what? We're not alone, Lighthouse. We got some issues that need correcting. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. That was a little weaker, but we got this fellow closer to home. But let the Spirit of God uh, touch us as we will. We know that the issues are coming. There are four, four essentials for victory and trials. See, I'm equipping you, and you can have these notes. Four essentials for victory and trials. One, when trials come, we're to have a joyful attitude. Yes. Oh, well, I feel like getting up and running now, but I'm going to sit tight for a while. Longer. Hey, when trials come, we're to have a joyful attitude. Amen. There's a difference between joy and happiness. Right. We go through sorrows. We go through hardships. We may not be happy. But joy is not based on circumstances. Right. That's something you give over to Satan when things come. You can have your joy in sorrow. You can have your joy, joy through hardship. You can have a joy no matter what. So we are, so in order to overcome, we are to have a joyful attitude. Secondly, we're to have an understanding mind. Man. Thirdly, a surrendered will. Yes. Fourthly, a heart that wants to believe. Yes. We're going to talk about these, then we'll be closing. I had I actually had more pages, but we showed you mercy today. So <laughs> there we go. A joyful attitude. I, I just like that. We need to smile more, church. Yeah. We need to be happy. We need to be. Oh, who wants to? Oh, I'm sorry, I need to get up. I gotta stay down. Okay. If I attend a church and the door greeter says, "Well, I figured everything," it's almost like, "Well, you're obviously not." <laughs> you know, come on. We ought to have joy. Yes. We need to say, "Hey, I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you came to the house of God." Praise team. When we get up here to praise, we were stumbling a little bit in joy at first. Picked it up and God took over. Praise God, He took over. But hey, we don't have to give in to that. Right. No matter what, you don't have to lose your joy. Right. Let that soak in. No matter what, you don't have to lose your joy. That's a choice you made. Right. See in John sixteen thirty three, Jesus said, "In this world, you're going to have trials." Yes. He He said that. Why are we so surprised? He said we're going to have trials. Some trials come because human sickness, accidents, and disappointments. Right. I, I put it this way. 
Sometimes trials or afflictions come in three different forms. One is Satan can rock your world. And he's messing with you. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. He's out to take that joy we're talking about. So Satan's out to, is after you. Secondly, afflictions come because, quite honestly, our stupidity. Ooh, that one got a little weak. They didn't get an amen on that one. I'll say amen on that one. Hey, our own stupidity brings afflictions. When we behave in a stupid way, it's no wonder we get afflictions. Did he say stupid? Can you say that Sunday morning? Stupid? Can you say that? Yeah. Hey, I, I'm with you. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm with you all the way here. Hey, we bring our own problems on ourselves. As individuals or as a church, we bring our own problems. Sometimes, backing up, Satan attacks us personally and he'll attack the church. Secondly, we bring our own problems on ourselves. Thirdly, did you know God will allow them himself? He will test you. Why, why would God? To grow you. Yes. To prune you. To grow us up. Yes. Church, we will go through periods of testing. Yes. You know what happens in our world today? Is that in our world today, if, if the trials are coming in a church, and, and we go through a time of trying, what we have a tendency to do is run. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. I stood up. Look out. When trials happen, I've told you in Scripture, they will happen, church. But what we do, we get all offended. We get all upset. And we say, hey, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just going down the street. I'm going to find me another one. And then we think, hey, this is the way, place I need to be. The Spirit of God's moving. He was moving in the Olympian church too, by the way. The Spirit of God's moving. And, and then you find, oh man, they got some problems too. So I'm going to go to this church. And you know what? You may go from church to church and at the end of the day find out the problem was you all alone. Oh boy. That just got real. There was one person that wanted to come to our church previously that left in anger of a church. And the person, one person said, hey, this person I invited to the church. And I, really? Why? And they said, well, they got really angry at their church and they want to come over there. I'm saying, well, probably if they were angry there, they're going to be angry here. The best thing you do is get resolution there. Yes. And if God calls you out of it, then be where God places you. Amen. But stay the course. Amen. Stay the course because their churches consist of people. And I don't know about you, I'm just not, I'm far from perfect. Are you with me? Are you far? I, I will make this, as a pastor, I make mistakes. But the key is, am I willing to admit it? And don't run. Deal with your issues. Find out where it's coming from. But be willing to deal with it. You know, sometimes uh, there will be issues in life, and what, what, our, what is our tendency? Sweep it under that proverbial carpet. Just, oh, it's gone now. No? And you go through life and you keep on doing that, and then the carpet gets thicker, and then the issues are still there, and then all of a sudden a big explosion takes place. My friend, the sooner we deal with it in love, the sooner we can heal and move on. The sooner we deal with it in love, the sooner we can heal and move on. We don't, I, I don't like conflict. I, I, I don't like it. But I am going to be mad enough to approach it. As a pastor, I have to. That's a part of being a pastor I don't like. But you know, I love it when we walk through the issues and we get victory on the other side. And when we do that, then there's glory. And there's growth. But until we do that, how many churches today don't even want to deal with the issues? Yeah. Right. Here's the, the reality. Is we are true Christians, and we're going to delve more into unity. We're going to delve more into these things. If we're true Christians, we have to forgive. Amen. Yeah, but you don't understand what they did. Tell it to the Messiah. Yeah. You don't understand how bad it was. Jesus exposes his own. You don't understand they hurt me. He shows you the pure side. And you say, that's, that's nothing compared to you. Right. 
And I don't have a right to hold a grudge, right? Saints, listen to me. I said what I just said. You do not have a right. You don't have that right to hold a grudge, right? Yeah, but get that yeah, but out of your language. You don't have that right. And if you do that, you're just saying, Satan, come on in. Right. That's right. It's an open invitation. It's an open invitation. Because you know what? Trials will come for various reasons. Some because we're Christians. Even says, Beloved, make it not strange concerning a fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. It's in Scripture. The key component is grow up and move beyond it. Right. It's no surprise. Our values, I'll sit back down. <laughs> our values, our values determine our evaluations. Right. If we value comfort more than character, then trials will upset us. Right. If we value the material and the physical more than the spiritual, we will not be able to count it all joy. Right. Amen. If we live only for the present and forget the future, then trials will make us bitter, not better. Right. We get so caught up in moments, don't we? And if we would just look beyond and see the vision ahead of us, that's my job is to continually portray the vision to you so we can keep moving. Right. Keep moving forward. Also, an understanding mind. An understanding mind. Faith is always tested. Faith is always tested. God will always test us to bring out our best. Right. Satan tempts us to bring out our worst. Right. Ooh, let that soak in a bit. God will let us be tested to bring out our best. If Satan's winning, he's bringing out our worst when we're tested. You know... We as a church can brag all we want to about the gifts, about the Spirit of God, about all these things in these walls. But if we go out there and we get on all sorts of forms of communication and slander our brothers and sisters, my friend, that's sin. Even if you were right, you're wrong. Right? Even if you're right, you're wrong. And, and Satan is bringing us to our worst. See, the reality is that we, we, there's going to be times that I'll rub, maybe I'm rubbing you wrong now. That's not my heart. That's not my heart. I just want to challenge you. I just want to be man enough to challenge you. Amen. To see it for what it is. The scripture reveals it right before our very eyes. Right. Why are we surprised? Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, yes. knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, character, and character hope. Yes. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Yes. Let's reread that. It says we're to glory in tribulations? Yes. Let that soak in, because we go way too fast sometimes. When tri tribulations come, we're to glory. See, the reality is that it's, it's God's way of refining us. And when we give Him the glory and praise, and there's victory on the other side, we give Him glory through the tribulation. Yes. So, whatever you're going through today, and I don't know how many people I'm speaking to online or in this building. I want to tell you something. There is glory in Jesus Christ. Amen. And there is victory on the other side. Yes. And maybe it feels overwhelming in the moment, but we got to live for the future. Yes. Because you know what? We win, Christians. Yes. We win. We ought to have a surrendered will. Yes. God cannot build our character without cooperation. Right. 
If we resist him, then he chastens us into submission. But if we submit to him, then he can accomplish his work. Yes. My friends, where does God want to take you? See, he's called you into his kingdom. And if you are in the church, you're in his kingdom. And he's called you for a purpose. And when the church functions as a fulfilling their purpose, there is great things that happen. Maybe it means moving somebody. Maybe it means touching a life. Maybe it means ministering to them. Maybe it means, hey, maybe it means that we take some blows. In Matthew chapter 5, it says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. For so did they the prophets before you. Great is your reward in heaven. Yes. Matthew 5. Also, we're to have a believing heart. Man. A believing heart. The greatest enemy to an answered prayer is unbelief. Yeah. Right. You know, this church has been through some difficulty, some hardship. I wonder how many of us have been praying about it. You know, when someone offends me or does something, do we hold them up in prayer? One of the hard things in life I've learned, or continue to learn, is when I'm hurt by someone, it's hard, then I say, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen was being stoned. We talked about an offense. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. When you study the book of James, the brother of Jesus. Did you know he didn't even believe in Jesus until after the resurrection? Right. He wrote the book of James some 15 years later. He became an elder in the, in the church. He became a pillar of faith. And it said, historically it said that when they killed James, he also said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. <laughs> When can we pray a prayer like that? But you don't understand. It's almost like the stones were being thrown at Stephen. He'd go, and he'd say, get him, God. Or, that's, that's, that's my tendency. That's not spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Right. When we start throwing stones, we're losing. Right. When we start, start forgiving, we're winning. In this scripture, it talks about praying for wisdom. It says, but when you pray, pray with all assurance. Yes. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right. There was a preacher once... Well, Lisa definitely knows the story. I've told it before in my uh, years of, in church. One time a preacher, it was on Sunday morning. And I remember this. Uh, my mother was sitting about where you guys are. And I remember the preacher said, pray. I didn't have any back problems. Pray for my back. And then he said, although I don't know, don't know how much good it will do. Uh -oh. The preacher. My mom was a pretty calm person, but... She gave him a call that afternoon. <laughs> and this was in the old days. We actually had Sunday night. Sunday night, he had a lot different attitude. Yeah. Father, forgive me for what I said. But we, we so readily say, oh, how could you say that? But are we much different? Father, forgive them as I throw another stone. But they hurt me as I throw another stone. Father, are we much different? See, when we say, Father, forgive them, we're also saying, Lord, help me to forgive them. Yes. But you don't know how bad they hurt. I dare say, we could just stop right here, and we're going to spend a few hours with a, with a called a pity committee service. <laughs> and we're going to go around, and you can write down how many times you've been hurt, even in church, or even in life. And I dare say, at the end of that time, it may be longer than that, if I had to write it down and I just read them off from the package and went out, you'd say, that was the worst church service I've ever been in. 
Because all they did was talk about their problems. I'd rather be in a church that deals with our problems. Amen. I'd rather be in a church that's just saying, forgive them, move forward. I'd rather be a part, as they're all, after all, it's biblical. Right. So if we say one thing and we go out there and do another, they're going to call us hypocrites. Right. And they're right. <laughs> but when we come in here broken, and we're humble, not arrogant, and we go out there broken, and we're humble and not arrogant. And we truly are Christians. We truly re represent our Lord and Savior. They are going to see a difference. And the church is going to see a difference. Right. And the Spirit of God will move in an amazing way. Mm -hmm. And we'll see people being healed. Quite honestly, there's some healing that needs to take place. But sometimes you're your worst enemy. And we'll see miracles. We'd love to see God move in an amazing way. But yet, I will tell you, it's your faith by hearing yeah. of the Word of God that's going to grow you. Mm -hmm. And if we are immature in our walk, that means we need to do some growing in our faith. Mm -hmm. right. This is the first few verses of this book. And it's going to strike home because it spells out us. And I'm going to read it because it's anointed by God. And you can read ahead. I give you permission. It's a quick read. I read it again this morning. When you do read, before you read the book, pray. Yeah. And, and when you pray, my challenge is to you to, to do that this week. But don't pray, God, get them. God, get me. Uh, our church service is going to change. The worship's going to be amazing. The preaching's going to be astounding. <laughs> Whoever's preaching. But the anointing will be flowing. Amen. The challenge is you end of this service today. Lesson number one. What's in our way? What's in our way? Whatever it is, it's time to get rid of it. God's far bigger than that. He's far bigger than that. So, even as you're leaving today, you can come up here and just touch the altar and leave it here. You can, whatever symbolism you want to do. The reality is Christ wants you to leave it at the cross. Yes. That's where it belongs. Right. He died for it. He died for it. Yes. Well, let's be Christians. Well, let's treat each other as Christians. Yes. A little insight, by the way, looking ahead to James 3. Do you realize it says in there about blessing and cursing? And we're going to talk about that later and then way ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. But we think cursing is like saying a bad word. That's not what it's saying. It's, not what it's, about. it's talking about when we curse our brothers and sisters. We need to be careful what we say. Okay. Which, by the way, if you read 1 Timothy chapter 5, and it talks about also to not speak well ill of your pastors. It says it right there, too, so I'm just saying. Just put it out there. Just saying. If I brought you the word today, Amen. it's a different style. Hey, I can preach a shout. I love preaching and shouting the glory of God. I love people being saved. But I want to grow. I want to grow. Yes. Heavenly Father, Spirit of God, I pray you grow us today. Father, you're speaking to each individual, including me. Father, forgive us, Lord, when our tongue and said things that are just out and wrong. Father, forgive us, Lord, when we have, have a, just strayed off the path. Lord, Lord, forgive us for those things that we're doing in our life, and each one of us may be aware of what it is. Lord, I pray you convict us by your spirit and that we throw that trash out of our lives and that we would live a spiritual life. God, when we're walking in the world, we're not fulfilling the flesh. They are opposites. And then we wonder why we can't grow. Father, for someone that we need, that we've offended, that we've said something, done something, let us be big enough, God, to say, I'm sorry. And move on. God, I pray today that 
that you would give us wisdom. You would pour wisdom. You've said liberally you would pour into us. God, I pray today that we'd be wise in our speech and our actions. That we would speak less and mean more. Father, I pray also for our emotions. We are so emotional. And Lord, sometimes our emotions have us say things we wish we wouldn't have. God, let us be so bold to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. And Lord, at the foot of the cross, what right do we have to harbor anything? God, forgive us and let us be people of love. Lord, let us be people that your love, we are loving because we've been loved. Lord, we are full of love because your spirit resides in us. And let us not just talk the talk, but let us walk the walk. Father, this, this message and this series you've laid on my heart, Lord, is going to teach us so many things. And Lord, at the end of the day, we will be grown so much if we allow you to grow us. Lead us. In your ways. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to ask the praise team to come as Lee said a song. Uh, select the song, sis. I put her on the spot. As we're doing that, we can be dismissed. We can dwell. But you know what? I just want to give you time, even if you have offended somebody. Just go up and say, you know what? I'm going to use Dan for an example. Go up here, Dan. Dan and I had breakfast this week. We talked about this growth in God. And you know, something like this. Dan, he said some things that offended me. And I, I forgive you. And I'm sorry. You know what's going on in his mind now? What did I say? <laughs> yeah. But me, uh, I was actually going to talk to him about all that after <laughs> But they think it's not hard. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. If you don't, you'll become bitter. Your family will be bitter. The church will be bitter. Walk away Jesus. Let's praise God.